So anyway, you can't really talk about the evolution of art without talking about the French. Um, uh, oh, let's see. I, I'm I don't mean to teach you. Um, you know I try to avoid that at all costs. Uh, the reason that the Impressions mean something is there were like pretty strict rules about art, and particularly French painting. The French Revolution, unlike our revolution, was a secular revolution. Not only did they, they kind of throw out the aristocracy, but they filled the cathedrals with grain. And um, the Louvre, instead of being a royal palace, became um, an art museum for really the first time. And this guy, Jacques-Louis David, was instrumental in starting something or, or sort of maintaining something called the Salon, which was the French um, standard for painting. They, were run, they ran the school of, of the Ecole de Beaux Arts um, that taught all, of the, all the arts. And they had sort of, you had to paint in a certain way in order to make a living. There were 18,000 painters in Paris, so it was as legitimate a thing to do for a living as being a lawyer or a doctor or an accountant or anything else. Um, but after the French Revolution, he, was, he had the rare um, <coughs> distinction of having been a favorite of, of Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI, and he also painted, uh, this is the death of Marat, who read, who, who, one of the leaders of the Reign of Terror, that's supposed to be a list of people meant for the guillotine, and Robespierre, and made it through to the other side and became a favorite painter of Napoleon. So this is a guy who politically was very savvy and very probably cynical, and he was running and establishing the Salon, which said you have to paint a certain way. There has to be a historical grandeur to it. There has to be, you can have naked people, but they have to be historical na naked people. They have to be Venus and Mars, and they have to be obviously well waxed. And, um, <laughs> and yeah, everything, I'm way ahead of this time, I guess. Um, this, is, uh, this is Jean Dominique Angre, who also um, only painted the well waxed. And, uh, and this is because it's Turkish, you're allowed to do this. And, and this is how painting had to be. Um, but they had a problem, and this guy, Eugene Delacroix, who was the darling of the salon, he was probably the most favorite pain, painter in Paris in the 1830s, he painted um, this very famous Liberty Leading the People, topless um, <laughs> painting, and he started doing stuff like this. He went to Algeria and he saw, you know, um, Bedouins and, and, uh, and lions and stuff, and he started painting with kind of crazy brush marks, which disturbed people to no end. Um, and then this guy, in 1863, Edward Manet, um, son of a lawyer, could have been an aristocrat at the time, paints this. Now, how we get to this is, it's not that big a deal, right? But what happened was, um, Francis had a couple of revolutions. Unlike ours, which happened, we didn't really have a second revolution until the Civil War, which is, believe me, that's what that was. If you have a revolution and it's not on a different continent, against a different continent, if it doesn't take, you have to have it again. And the, and the French would have four revolutions between 1789 and, and now, 1863. And the guy that sort of came out of the top, the Third Empire, they called him, was uh, Napoleon's uh, nephew, Louis Napoleon. And he thought, well, there's a whole bunch of cool stuff going on on the North American continent. I need to get into that. And he declared um, war on Mexico, which is where we get Cinco de Mayo, because he got such a, a, a completely thorough ass kicking by the Mexicans on the 5th of May that they have it as their main national holiday now. And the, the salon had this, this big exhibition every year called The Salon, or every other year. And they picked 3,000 paintings, and those were basically the guys that were going to make a living as a painter, because you couldn't get a commission, a, a wealthy person wouldn't let you paint their wife, um, you couldn't sell your paintings, you, nobody was going to you know, let you do a building or sculpture unless you could hang at the salon. And 3,000 guys were, or mostly guys, were rejected from the salon. And so the people of Paris were like, that's bullshit, or, you know, however you say that in French. And, <laughs> And so, yeah, exactly. Um, 
So Louis Napoleon goes, whoa, whoa, wait, we're going to do a salon of the rejected. All the paintings that were rejected are going to go in a different palace, and we're going to go see those. And this was scandalous. This was scandalous. Everybody gathered around this and laughed and pointed and wrote horrible things about this painting, this luncheon on the grass. And it's really not that extraordinary. Um, it's based on a Titian painting, this painting. You know, two guys dressed, two women not. Um, but the difference between this and the, the well-sanded nudes of, of, uh, uh, of uh, the other people, and this one is another painting he painted that same year, although nobody would see it until 1965, is these were real people. And the French didn't want to know about real people. The Salon didn't want you to paint real people. This is clearly um, a woman who's a prostitute going next. And it's also based on a Titian. Um, except this Titian has a woman throwing up in the background. Which, uh, <laughs> so maybe, maybe that was Manet's mistake. He's like, well, you forgot the, the, the sick chick in the background. And this, this appeared in the salon of the same year, so it wasn't the nudity. It was the fact that they were reminding the, the Parisians, it's 1863, it's Victorian France. Even though it's France and we're wild and crazy, nobody wanted to be reminded that their husband actually had a mistress. You know, you weren't allowed, women weren't allowed to ride on the upper story of the, of the streetcars because someone might see their ankle. And yet there were licensed brothels, there were 125,000 licensed prostitutes working in Paris at the time. And every single upper class man that you, there's a record of had a mistress in the demi monde, the half world, which included dancers, models, singers. Um, basically, shop girls, anybody who was working. The, the French Salon's problem were guys like this. This is Gustave Cor Cor Corbet, who was a realist. He started just painting forests and things real and then got weirder and weirder as time went on. Um, and Corot, this guy was just painting realistic landscapes and they didn't want realism. Um, this guy, Millet, who was um, painting peasants. Nobody wanted pictures of peasants. You weren't supposed to, you can't get the Salon with that. And he would influence a guy named Vincent Van Gogh um, later on, after the Impressionists. You, it's okay if you painted little girls like this. This is Bourgeois. Um, we have a great one of those at the Legion of Honor. Um, but you couldn't paint them like this, because here they are. They're, the new invention of the Industrial Revolution is fun. You're not allowed to paint fun. <laughs> at that same uh, exhibition was uh, a painting called The White Girl at the time would later be called Harmony in White, number one, uh, by James McNeil Whistler, an American who was thrown out of West Point and then sort of exiled to London to be a painter because his brother was a Confederate Army surgeon and his mother, as we know, her, his disapproving mother study, um, arrangement in gray and black um, didn't want him to be a painter. So he's in London and he paints this, he gets lead poisoning from painting this. Um, because it's made, in, it's in lead white, and he keeps scraping it. He scraped it 70 times and started it over again. And of course, that entered through his system. And so he wasn't actually at the exhibition. In my book, he is at the exhibition. Um, but he was in Biarritz, uh, recovering from lead poisoning when this showed. He was friends with Manet. And he, this was rejected by the British Academy, which was the same as the Salon. This Whistler. That's not out of focus, that's just how he painted it. Um, and the problem with, he also became great friends with Corbet, who ran off with the white girl um, and painted this of her. And uh, another painting that was so scandalous, they didn't even show it to anybody until 1963. This is like 1866. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Um, this was the guy at the, at the English salon uh, that ran it. It was Joshua Reynolds. Um, that's one of his paintings, before, after, before, <laughs> after. Um, <laughs> that's not how he titled them, that's how I titled them. <laughs> before, after. Um, this painting was by um, J.W.M. Turner, who was a problem for their academy, because he was doing stuff like this. You can't do stuff like this. You can't have lines and paint thrown all over in the trains. 
as stuff like this. He was a madman. Turner lashed himself to the mast of a steamship and had them drive into a snowstorm so he could see what it looked like inside of it. They weren't happy about this because he was probably the best painter of his time. You see the stuff he did when he was 13 years old of cathedrals and watercolors? You cannot believe anyone could do it, let alone someone who was 13 years old. So you, they had a mad genius who was sort of heading the perspective uh, department of their academy. So Whistler was rebelling against these guys that had their own problem. And there's Whistler in the middle of it. Um, and they're celebrating the, this is a tribute to Eugene Delacroix, remember the guy with the lions and so forth. And you see Edward Manet on the right with the blonde beard. And sitting to his left is the poet Baudelaire. This is, uh, the painting is by the guy in the white shirt, which is Henri Le, uh, Fontaine Latour. So at that exhibition, all these students were gathered around Manet like puppies. One of them was a guy named Claude Monet. Another was Auguste Renoir, Frederick Basile, Paul Cezanne. Edgar Degas, oh, we'll get to this in a second. 